today we're going to be making pony falls and if you're unfamiliar with the term pony falls in the 90s what we would do was we would make these pigtail hair extensions that attach to our existing hair and we called them pony falls and you could either combine them into one ponytail but typically we would do them in pigtails because we idolize looks like you know tina root of switchblade symphony those big teased pigtails and the kinder goth look was also very popular at the time and it was a nice departure from the very popular hairstyle of the 90s as well which we all had i had it it was the angled bob short in the back longer in the front parted on the side pin straight i loved the look every now and again you would tease it hair raised to the heavens but that was really all that it, it did sometimes you just wanted some big luscious goth locks and we got that by way of pony falls so when i first started going to the goth clubs i remember seeing girls with this ever-changing hair and it seemed to be almost impossible <laughs> this hair and i it didn't occur to me that it was synthetic hair because i wasn't familiar with synthetic hair at the time and every time i saw them it was just extraordinarily long all of these different colors and teased and big and, and just incredible and, and i would wonder with all of these colors how the hell they were not going bald at this point with the amount of effort and and chemicals we need to create that but it turns out it was this stuff so i quickly became familiarized with something called jumbo braid so you're going to see a lot of different types of braiding hair in the store now this one is Kinecolon fiber Kinecolon fiber is the way to go for what we're doing and when you're applying heat especially you want Kinecolon fiber this stuff is magic if you add heat and it becomes very silky the thing that happens though when you add heat to this it will decrease in volume and go almost to about half but it'll get like 10 feet longer so this is like the best hair to work with the brand doctor locks sent this to me after they saw my last hair piece video and they allowed me to choose um, from their copious amounts of colors i cannot i cannot believe the amount of colors of Kinecolon jumbo braid that's available today we had it, you know how hard it was just to find any other of the primary colors like a red or a blue you would have to tear manhattan apart and queens and brooklyn just to find this stuff and now it's everywhere and they have so many different shades like the in-between shades not only just blue but every shade of blue like turquoise and sky blue and baby blue and powder blue so what we're going to need to make them we want five bags of this you can probably get away with four but i'm going to say five just to be safe so you want the most colors you want to get are your base colors so we're going to do let's see we're going to do a base and two accents so your base color needs to match the top of your head when i say match your hair always the top of your head because that's the only part of your hair that's going to be visible everything else is going to be hair piece so it's got to match the top of your head if you want it to look like your own hair so you're going to want if you're doing any accent colors three base colors at the very least you always want your base colors to outnumber your accent because the more base to accent color that ratio is going to make it look more like your existing hair and i chose cobalt and violetta violetta i believe it's called and i'm going to be mixing this in in a different way the way that a lot of people tended to do it is they would use their base color and they would add the accent colors in little streaks we're not going to do that here what i want to do is i want to just shuffle it all together like a deck of cards and that's really one of the main reasons that you really do want a lot more of your base color it's funny because i'm talking about how many colors are available today and i even even if we had these colors available today and i were making pony falls i would just be doing solid black i always just like to keep it simple solid black really thick pigtails teased to high heavens and if i was feeling a little bit extra i would add white that was it my my colors were black and white if i was feeling extra but nope it was usually just black what you're gonna need you're gonna need your five bags your three base 
two accent color. We need four of these hair elastics. Now I went with a medium. I should have probably gone with a large size because my hair is a little bit thicker, but you wanna do four of these and you'll see why when I make the hair piece, why you want four of them. And this has to do with the anchoring to your hair. You want as many bobby pins as you can possibly find. The shorter your hair, the more of these you want. And this is also gonna help anchoring it in place because tying it to your hair is not gonna be enough. It's a two part system. First we attach it with this and then we secure it with these. Scissors. Like I said, this hair is like magic. Once you apply heat to it, it does shrink down in width. We lose in width, we gain in length. Um, in addition to that, when we're shuffling the hair, it's also going to get really super long. Another thing you're going to need is a hair dryer. Don't use a hair straightener, you're just going to melt the hair, but you want the hair dryer because the hair dryer, as you apply heat, you're going to watch it turn from crimped to silky hair, which is, is really fun to watch. Don't wear any rings or any bracelets because as a theme with everything, we want to keep things frugal and affordable. And if you're wearing rings or bracelets, you're risking getting something caught to the hair and then just losing the piece entirely. So we don't want to do that. One of the most important things with getting these started is you need something to hang the hair piece from that's sturdy. I chose my lamp. <laughs> now take the light bulbs out since we're going to be using heat because that just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. So this is the blending part of the process and the blending part can be probably I think the most arduous task. And what you're going to want to do is continually kind of run your fingers through the hair and work out all of those knots because they're going to be a lot and expect to lose a lot of the hair. It seems like a lot, but I promise you, you're not going to lose a lot in the hair piece. It just looks like a lot when you see it on the floor. So what I like to do is I like to use a chair. The back of the chair is really useful with anything. You can really use the back of the chair if you wanted to, to anchor the hair piece to. But if I did that, you would not see anything that was going on. So lamp it is. I'm laying the hair out flat. If you notice, I'm sort of kind of spreading it out, putting it on the back of the chair, and then you're gonna do the same with the accents. So at this point, I'm kind of unsure with how much of the accent colors I wanna use. So divvy it in half. It's better to use less and you can add more later than just add the whole thing to the pot and then you know, look like you've gone to clown college. So let's start light. So you're gonna spread everything out, kind of layer it on top of each other. And that's really the best way to get it started is to just lay it on top of each other, kind of imagine it like a delicious seven layer dip, but instead of dip, it's hair and you don't wanna eat this. What you're gonna find with Kineclon fiber hair before it's heated is that it's quite thick and voluminous and it could be a little bit unruly to work with when it's in its crimped state and it could become tangled really easily. So you wanna break it off in workable portions when you start to blend. Don't do it all at one time. So what I've done is, as you can see, I'm kind of breaking it in half, always work in halves. And if that half is still a bit bigger, break that in half. And that's the way we're gonna be working through this entire thing is in halves. So take the hair, pull it apart in half, and then layer it on top of the other, just kind of stack it. And that's what I'm doing here, even though I'm going like a million miles an hour, <laughs> I'm pulling it apart in half, and then I'm stacking it on top of each other and continually do that over and over. And what you're gonna start to notice is the effect changes. It's gonna become less streaky and more blended. So once you see streaks, you're gonna wanna get your finger right in the middle of that, pull it apart, and again, stack it on top of the hair and don't overwhelm yourself work in portions don't try to do it all at once it's going to end up in a big mottled mass on the floor and we don't want to lose that much hair it's going to look like you lose a lot when you're working these pieces anyway because as you're doing this it starts to knot up at the bottom but that's when you want to get your feet involved in the action pull it apart and if you see that there's a knot at the bottom put your foot right through it and that's what I do, and it works like a charm every time. So just get them feet kicking.
Once you're happy with the blend, divide the hair into halves. These are gonna be your pony falls. So you're gonna need your four hair elastics now. And using one elastic, you want to divide it directly in the middle and then have the hair kind of fall over the length of the elastic and then pull the top part through the loop that it creates. If you can double knot it even better, don't drop it, it's disastrous. I chose the medium length hair elastics, which was really stupid. I should have gone with the long because it would have been a lot easier. Um, still got it to work. So the next part you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to cap the top. And the reason we're capping the top is this helps the way that the hair piece falls. Because if you leave it as is and try to wear it like that, it's gonna split down the middle and your real hair is gonna show right in the center of it. It looks weird. So pretend like you're creating an octopus in arts and crafts and then wrap the hair elastic around the top like you're making an octopus head or ghosts. We can do ghosties too. Wrap it around as tight as you can and that's it. Now it's time to blow dry the hair, but there are certain things you need to keep in mind when doing this. Temperature, distance, and direction. First, turn the temperature up as high as you can on the blow dryer, but always aim it downward. The reason you're aiming it downward is you're stopping knots from happening because if you aim that blow dryer straight ahead, the hair piece is gonna knot up and it's gonna be a bird's nest and you won't be able to come back from that. The hair piece is essentially destroyed. So always aim it downward toward the bottom of the hair, toward the floor. Second, temperature wise you want to work with distance and figure out how close is too close you'll notice right away how close you can get to the hair with the blow dryer but again you always want the high temperature because that's what's going to straighten it however distance is going to determine whether or not it's essentially going to melt so play with distance start a little bit further away and then you can slowly get a little bit closer but as you're heat sealing you want to work downward and brush run your fingers through brush through but if you want to minimize the amount of hair lost grip the hair piece in the center and then start brushing at the bottom and then kind of work your way up and you'll notice that the hair you might get a little bit frustrated because different hair straightens at different rates they kind of work on their own schedule depending upon the color of the hair and the manufacturer so when you're working with your hair piece you might notice that one color straightens immediately while another color is being a little bit stubborn. But stick with it, don't worry. They'll all straighten in the end. But like I said, depending upon manufacture and color, they all kind of work at their own rate. This hair is magic. It gets really long the more you straighten it. So it's gonna get to a point where you're gonna want to cut the bottom. And less is more. Always cut less because you could always go in and cut more in the end, but if you cut too much, you're not reattaching that. But if you cut too much, there's no getting that back. So I decided to keep these really long, so I just gave it a really quick kind of razored edge at the bottom, and that's it. So the falls are done and they're ready to be attached. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create little buns on your head. And I keep thinking that my camera is wonky, but it's just my buns that are, I didn't quite get them symmetrical, but I did the best that I can. And uh, unfortunately what does end up happening, but you can adjust them once they get on your head is that if these are off, the falls will be off a bit, but I'm just gonna kind of fix them as I go because I have really long hair and getting them in these buns was not easy. So I'm gonna show you how to attach them. So first thing I want to explain with these is the reason we're making two is that it's just easier to control them and it's just you, um, you don't risk structural integrity when it comes to creating two because as you can see with the whole process, the mass of the hair was just, it was a lot. So when you're putting all of that into just one elastic to hold on to it, it could break. 
So when you separate it into two, it makes things a lot easier and you get two kinds of uses out of it. Even if you do plan to wear it as one single ponytail, which you can combine them, what you do is to do that, if you just want the one single ponytail, you take these and you get them really close together, as close together as possible and get the larger elastics. See the elastics that I got, too small. You wanna get the larger ones and just wrap it around entirely, both buns, and then do the same thing with the other fall and then you have them in two separate ones. It works out better, trust me. Okay, I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully I get this, I get it right. So you wanna wrap it around the bun, and I'm hoping mine isn't too thick versus the size of this. If not, we will find a way, and um, I thought I had a lot of bobby pins, which I did, but I needed most of them to just get my cinnamon buns in my head. So let's give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to attach it here. Do you see how it hangs down that way? And then you're going to pull it to the middle, flip it over, and then that's where the bobby pins come into play because you're going to be pinning the fall to your bun. Kind of difficult to see what we're doing here. But when you're in the mirror and you can see what you're doing, I promise it'll be a lot easier for you. I only have four, four bobby pins to make this work. So, fingers crossed. And the same for this side. I'm just kind of get that out of the way. And you'll see that it looks a little bit wonky, but you could always fix that later. So again, attach it to the underside, pull it in toward the middle, and flip it over the bun. We are not playing games. Ah, I had to make a slight modification from the buns. So if you have long hair already and you're only doing this really for like volume or just to change the color around a little bit, don't do the buns. The buns are just gonna weigh down the rest of your hair and pull it down. So put your hair in just regular pigtails. Really secure them in tightly, as tightly as you can, because again, the weight will pull it down with your hair. Since you have a lot of hair yourself, if you have longer hair, the weight will pull it down. However, if your hair is just a little bit on the shorter side, the buns will work just fine and it'll also give you a little bit of lift and volume. So this is a finished product. It could have done with a little bit more of a heat blast. So bear in mind, the more heat that you apply, the silkier they will get. Just be a little bit careful, use your distance, and you won't have to worry about, say, melting them or anything. Oh,